so in short, I have spent the last couple months at Notch 8 in an internship, uh, just at, graduated from Epicotus, and I spent this whole month reworking some JavaScript curriculum. And it reminded me of the necessity for review on some of these topics. We're all Ruby developers, well, most of us. We work with the web, and one of the things you can't escape when you're working with the web is JavaScript. So I love the keyword, this, in Ruby. And when it acts, I mean, in, in JavaScript, and when it acts like self, I could be happy. But uh, then we start working with closures and JavaScript, and we get things like this. No one likes looking at that. Oh, uh, yeah, I can make that bigger. Oh, here we go. No, that, that didn't do it either. What if you just command plus? Is it bigger than that? That's it? Okay. That's good. Okay. Uh, so we get things like this, where that equals this. No one wants to see that. Come on, guys. Let's use uh, descriptive variable names, please. Uh, other programs will be happy, including f future you. So when you're working with closures, uh, oh, I forgot about this uh, slide. <laughs> uh, here are some ways to set this. We have method calls. The object method is in. Uh, if you just call it within a function, you're not going to get what you want. It's going to be global unless you're, unless you're working in strict mode. Uh, call and apply. Those are not fun, but uh, it's the uh, object that you're referencing in here, uh, a constructor or an inline event handler for a DOM element. But uh, back to closures, when you're working with cl closure in uh, JavaScript, it's when you contain a function completely inside of another function, and you can get some weird uh, this settings when you do that. Uh, for example, here, uh, this console.log is the nav element, but then you get into the set timeout function, and suddenly this is now the global object window. That's not what you want. You want to be working with the nav element. So we're going to fix that by doing this. We're going to set a variable parent instead of that. And then we're going to call parent inside of our set timeout function so that we haven't lost what we want to be working with. Um, we have the same problem that occurs when we use a method, when we call a method that uses this as a parameter, but we use it as a callback. For example, here we have a button we click when we want to do some actions, and it calls a user.click handler function as a callback. But when we do it like this, we have a cannot read property zero of undefined error. That's because the button is now the object that called this, and therefore user doesn't exist anymore. So to fix that, we're going to change it to, come on, there we go, button.click user handler and bind it to user so that we haven't lost this. In short, JavaScript this is a very powerful and versatile tool, but like anything else, we have to treat it with respect.